Hi, my name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Uh, today we're going to build this little drop-down announcement banner, and uh, it'll be there by default when you load your page, but you can click this away, and then we'll store it in local storage so that even if you refresh here, it won't show up again no matter what. If you close your browser, come back, same thing. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's jump right in. Okay, so I've just got a basic setup here with this index.html page. As you can see, I've got these cards um, that are responsive, just laid out in a grid. Um, and I've got this basic kind of header area, this nav bar, and what we want to do is add this announcement uh, banner right below here. So we're going to do this kind of in two stages. I've also got this announcement.js script loaded here, some basic styling over here. Um, but we're going to do this in two stages. First of all, we are just going to work on the styling for this announcement bar. Now, because I want this to load right away, I'm gonna go ahead and add the style right here in kind of these style tags in HTML. So that'll help the speed a little bit so we don't have any kind of weirdness when the page first loads. Um, so let's do that kind of one after the other. So the first thing you'll notice, we've got this kind of container announcement area. And so we'll just call that announcement. This is just selecting the class and the background color. We're going to set to this value I've got kind of set aside ahead of time, um, E70D43D43. All right, and then the color of the text, we want to be um, just a little off white, that way it's not too jarring. We do want to fix this um, so that when we scroll the page, it will uh, remain kind of at the top of the page. Now, right now it's behind this banner, but like if I come in here and add a Z index, of like four or something like that. You'll see it pulls up there. Now, it's obviously not styled great right now. Because it's fixed, we'll make sure that it goes kind of the full width of everything there. So we'll set a left zero and a right zero. And then we want all the text inside of it to be centered. So let's add that. Text align center and the line height we will do 1.4. And then we do want like a little box shadow. You might notice here that as we scroll, this nav bar has a little box shadow. So let's add something similar uh, here for this announcement bar. So a box shadow, this is the X value, the Y value, the blur, and then we'll set a color because we want it to have some transparency, we'll use RGBA. We won't do quite black, uh, we'll do just a little kind of dark gray and add like a 60% transparency, something like that. So you'll notice it's sitting on top of here how we've got this kind of blur effect going on here. Okay, so that's our announcement container. Now we've actually got or our announcement kind of outer container. Now we've got the actual announcement itself, that container inside. And I'll show you why we're doing this in just a moment. So if we come in here and do announcement container, uh, we'll do display flex. That should immediately switch those things to be horizontal. And uh, we wanna do justify content center and align items center. Okay, that'll put everything directly in the middle, and I'll show you how we're going to move that uh, little box, that button over here. All right, we also want to do some padding, so let's do like 1.2 uh, REM and 2.8 REM and font weight, which I suppose we could have done up above here. We'll do 500 or so. Okay, so we're starting to look right. Um, let's now add some styling for that button. Okay, so let's get a little more space here and scroll this up. Okay, so this announcement button, we actually are going to position this absolute. And that'll allow us to move it around wherever we want. Right now it's just going to sit right there in the middle. But we'll do, on the right side of the screen, we'll do something like, I don't know, 7 REM, which is like probably 8-ish pixels off the side. And then um, we'll do a border none to get rid of some of that default styling. And then for our background of the button, we want to add a URL. And we've got this here in our directory, this SVG. Now you'll notice here it's kind of loading off to the side weirdly. Uh, so we're going to do a couple things to fix that. First off, uh, let's add a height of 1.2 REM, that's something like 19 pixels, I think, and 1.2 REM. Ah, I was trying to figure out why that was white. <laughs> I needed a, another semicolon there. 
uh, background size now because it's still not quite fitting. We'll do contain to make sure it always shows kind of in the full size of that container. Now, if you notice, if we hover over this, we don't get any kind of indicator that it's clickable. And so what we want to do is come over here and we'll do cursor uh, pointer. Now we want to have some kind of hover state on this. So let's go ahead and add a transition of ease in and out. 200 milliseconds. Okay, so now let's add that button transition, that hover. So we'll come in here and announcement, button, hover. And we want to do transform scale, I think is what we'll do here. Just add a little scale transition. So when we hover over it, it should kind of scale up just like that. Okay, so believe it or not, that's all the styling we need to do on these uh, this area. Before we do too much more, we're going to come up here and change this to one so it goes behind the screen. And uh, in a moment, we're going to use JavaScript to make sure it always gets set in the right position. Now we could just do this here, figure out the height of this uh, element, and then um, so it looks like we got 64 pixels. So we could just say top 64 pixels. But in case we change that, I'll show you how to kind of dynamically set that uh, using JavaScript. Okay, so we've got everything set up there. Let's now come over to our JavaScript. And let's go ahead and kind of list out a few um, kind of pseudocode things, wh what we're going to do here on out. Okay, so we're going to come up here. The first thing we're going to do is check local storage. And we're going to look at the local storage and see if we can find... Um, uh, something that we set in there, an item that we set. So I'll show you that in a second. In local storage, you can set kind of key value pairs that stay on the client's device so they never get sent to a server or anything like that. And uh, so they don't have any kind of security vulnerabilities or or anything where you've got to like alert the user, hey, we're storing cookies or, or anything like that. It's all local. And you can set whatever you want and then read whatever you want. And it'll stay there until they clear, manually clear that local storage. Okay, so we'll uh, also then um, do some query selectors and we'll add those there. And then we need to handle the closed announcement. Okay, let's start by checking the local storage. So we'll come in here and we'll simply do if local storage. This is again the client's device. And we're going to get an item. This item does not yet exist yet because we haven't made it. But we'll come in here to announcement and we'll say if announcement is equal to hidden. And that's what we're going to name it. We'll see if that's the case, then basically uh, don't do anything because <laughs> we don't want to show it. Else, we want to grab the actual nav height and offset it. So here's what we're going to do. We'll say nav height. We'll do document dot query selector. And we'll just select that whole nav element. And then what we want to do is grab the offset height. Now this offset height, let's go ahead and just examine what this does. So offset height, MDN is a great place to search for stuff. Let's come in here. Okay, so it's a read-only property. So we're not writing anything to it. And it returns the height of an element, including the vertical padding and borders as an integer. That's what we want. So what we want to know is what's the height of this in basically in pixels. That's what we're, we're wanting to get. So we can come over here. It does not include it. You may have noticed there it does not include the before and after. We're not going to be touching anything with before and after, so that shouldn't be a problem. So if we come in here and just console log nav height, and then load this here. Let's pull up the console. All right, and it's giving us 64, which is, you might remember exactly what it inspected at. So that's perfect. So no matter what happens with this nav element, if we add more padding or whatever, if it shrinks down on mobile crazily or gets bigger on desktop, it'll always grab it kind of live uh, whenever we need it. So we'll always make sure we've got the exact pixel value there. So we'll say, um, if that happens, then... We'll say document.querySelector. And what we want to do is grab that whole announcement area. So if we come over back over here, you might remember that we have this whole announcement bar. That's what we're wanting to move itself. So document.querySelector.announcement. And we want to set the style of the top. And then here we'll do backtick so we can interpolate the string or interpolate this uh, 
variable in the string. So we want to grab the nav height and then add px to it for pixel. And you'll notice as soon as we save, it actually jumps down exactly the amount it needs to, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we've, we went ahead and set this. Now, if we try to click this, nothing happens. If we refresh, uh, nothing happens because we have a few more things we need to do. Let's come over here and handle the closed announcement next. Okay, so we just say function, let's call this hide announcement. Now we can do this in one of two ways. We could either do like a, grab the a query selector for this button itself and say, hey, let's add an event listener to it. And every time you click it, run, go ahead and run this function. The other way we can do it, and this is the way I'll do it today, is we can come in here and say on click, we want you to run this hide uh, announcement button or a function that we're going to write. So whenever we click this button, we want you to run this uh, function. So right now this function has exactly nothing going on. So let's add something. Let's just do console.log. You clicked it. All right, perfect. So we'll come over here. When you click this, you clicked it. All right, we officially have clicked it. That's just what we want. So let's go ahead and come in here. And I suppose what we should do is let's drag this out. Let's add this as a query selector. Um, so we'll do const uh, announcement equals document.query selector. And let's go ahead in here and say, an announcement, if I can spell correctly. And we'll need to go ahead and move these to the top here. So we check for those first. All right, so let's, uh, well, then what we can do is come in here and grab, since we declared that constant outside of this function, um, we can go ahead and grab it inside here because it's scoped to this whole document. So we'll do announcement.style. Um, top, and this time we're going to say uh, zero pixels. And then we're going to set the local storage. So we'll say local storage set item announcement. And what we want to set it to, this announcement um, item, and we can call this whatever we want, but since we said it was called announcement here, that's what we want to call it down here. And we'll just say hidden. Okay, perfect. So now when we come in here, Immediately when the page loads, it grabs this query selector and then it runs this local storage fetch. And it fetches and says, is there anything in your local storage, which is right here, is there anything in this local storage called announcement, any key called announcement? If so, does it have this value to the key? Well, as you can see, we've got nothing down this way. And so it's going to say, okay, so it doesn't equal hidden. So now we're going to come down here and say, well, let's grab the nav height. We'll offset this announcement by that amount. Now, when we click this button, which you might remember, we added this on click hide announcement function over here. When we click this, it should run this function, which will now grab this same um, query selector and add this style dot top equals to zero pixels, which means it'll come up behind here. And this local storage dot set item announcement hidden. Uh, there we go. Uh, it'll actually set that uh, for us so that the next time somebody comes back to our page, it will be gone. So let's click. And there we go. You'll notice this key value pair was added. And even if we refresh, it'll still stay just like that. Now we can, of course, come in here and delete this. And as soon as we refresh, it does all these checks and it's right back where it started. So as you can see, um, adding this key value pair down here in your local storage means that whenever somebody visits your site, it will check first and then decide whether or not to display that announcement. Now you can do one other different thing. You might just, you might notice here that we've got these cookies. These cookies are actually going to send stuff to a server. That's why we're not using it. But you can also set something to session storage. The difference between these two is that session storage will reset after you close the tab. So when they come back to your site, it'll actually show that banner again. Um, whereas local storage, once you add this key value pair, it's there permanently until they clear their cache or you reset it um, the next time they come to your site or something like that if you write some other JavaScript to do that. So hopefully it was a help to you and uh, hopefully you, can, uh, you understood kind of the process of getting there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and uh, happy coding. Thanks for watching.